Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Meet Bob, the junk pile arch top guitar. This is actually a guitar kit, world kit. Um, it looked brand new the other day. We've done a lot of work to it, but we're at a point now where we're starting to individualize um, this guitar to give it its theme. I've got a gauge in here from a T model Ford and some matchbooks and stuff. And we are going to do some to the neck. We're also going to do some stuff to the body in a future episode. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use some license plates to fix up this guitar or ruin it, whatever your preference is. Now, when Bob the arch top is done, you'll be able to tell because when you see an eye pop up here called something about start to finish Bob, that's what it'll be, and you can click on there. But little short episode today. There's going to be another one in a week about doing something else, but we are going to focus on putting a license plate up here on the headstock and doing it in such a way that it's safe, it doesn't cut somebody, the tuners are functional, and um, it adds rather than detracts from the guitar. So, a little bit about this thing. We stained it with Oak Gall ink. There is an episode up here right about now about how to make Oak Gall ink. They signed the United States Constitution with it and wrote hundreds of books for hundreds of years when that's all they have. But this guitar is actually stained with galls made from an oak tree mixed with ferrous sulfate and some other things. And that episode again about making oak gall and cover your mouse up there when the eye pops up, you'll see it and it'll tell you exactly how to do it. But we're going to hit the bench and we are going to go through this fairly quickly. I'll show you how to do it and how it turns out well and how to use scrap metal to make the guitars more interesting. Let's hit the bench. Okay, let's throw the special rag up here and that way we can protect this wonderful, beautiful, pristine neck. Um, you have seen me use uh, license plates and different pieces of metal and stuff to cover up headstocks, uh, use for pickup surrounds, pit guards, uh, jack uh, plates, that type of thing. And on this guitar, we're going to end up using a couple of these um, Arizona plates. I like the one with the cactus, so that's going to be up here. There's going to be a lot of Arizona theming here, so i got a couple of these plates. Look at that one. It's got Chick Flick Teal on it. It came in that way. I can't believe it. The planets are lining up for me. Anyway, when we start thinking about using these kinds of things, we want to know how thick they are. This Marble Mystery Oil can is much thinner than, say, this license plate. Also, be aware, this plate, there was a time when I could buy this plate. I was looking for Mississippi house plates because it was kind of an, uh, a word play on sun house. But the minute I started buying these up, somebody figured it out, and now a plate that used to cost me $10 is now going to cost you 40 so make sure you know what you're cutting up. Um, things are rusty. You might want to cut up a rusty plate like this 1932 Mississippi track. No, I don't think so. Anyway, I don't want you set uh, down the path of coveting just before Easter, so let's, let's get on with what I'm talking about here. Okay, on some of my guitars, I make my own necks. So I cut my own scarf joints, and there's an episode right up there, right about now, about how to make this scarf joint jig that goes on a chop saw. So you just clamp it down here, you clamp it down here, you clamp the piece of wood, and it cuts this angle, and you take uh, a uh, neck board and do the same thing, and they fit together, so you end up with something that looks like this. But before you do all that, you're going to need to know how thick can my headstock be and how thick is the metal going to because we have to put tuners on and once you glue this onto a board you can't run it through a plane or after that you're, you're trying to use a belt center so the best thing to do is figure out tuners Bob's going to have a set of Grover tuners because there's some big strings on this guitar um, once these go in and wind down I need to know how much is sticking up and so when I 
if I were to make the neck for this, when I ran it through the planer, I would know. When you get a piece like this down, cut down like this, running it through a planer is dangerous. You'll end up getting it shot out at you 100 miles an hour, cutting your fingers off, trying to fish it out. So the first thing is, know how thick things can be for you to have enough tuner clearance where they're sticking up enough to have your strength. Sorry to belabor this, but you don't want to find this out later when it's all put together. Okay, this is really pretty easy. Um, you take a piece of cardstock, you know where your nut is, you know where your truss rod um, access point is, and you just put a piece of cardstock on here, clamp it down, turn this over, and you trace it out. Okay, you end up with the... Now, if you're using something that's stained black like this one, go ahead and use a Sharpie. If it's not something that you want to get all messed up, then of course you'd want to use the Love Pencil. Anyway, just be aware that whenever you're running this down here, there is going to be the possibility that you'll touch the edges and leave marks on your headstock. On this, that's not going to be too much of a problem on fine stuff. You might not want that. Okay, so now once I trace this out, again by flipping it over and, and, and cutting out, I cut it out like this. If it's something I'm going to use, um, I'm going to give you a word of advice. Don't be using Gibson um, um, book, open book style for your headstock. Don't do that. You'll be getting a letter from the Gibson company. You don't, you don't really want that. So come up with something of your own. And when you do, um, you can take this piece of paper and basically lay it out on a piece of eighth inch board or masonite or something. This is a piece of one side's whiteboard. The other one is a chalkboard. Anyway, you cut one of these out and use it for a template, drill a hole in it. You might go as far as to um, trace out where your truss rods are going to go. But anyway, get this done. And then if you want to take it even a step further and you're drilling your own holes, if you're doing a cigar box guitar, um, you could have two holes here and two holes here and one here. So you could do uh, three uh, tuners or whatever you're going to do. Anyway, lay this out, get it done so you can use it another time. Now, once you have this, we're just going to lay it out on a license plate. Okay, I've decided I want to use this one here um, because I want this cactus, or at least part of it, to show up. So when somebody's playing the guitar, you can see the saguaro cactus up on the headstock, like, like so, okay? couple things to think about. Know the orientation of your plate. This ridge right here comes in really handy because when you're strumming on a guitar, you would really rather have this edge here than this one. So if you can cut this back to like so, that's going to be good. Just think about that if we're doing a pick guard or something in a week or so. But anyway, you want to kind of have a look at this and make sure your orientation is the way you want it and stuff. Again, cutting these up can get pricey, especially if you don't get what you want. So I'm going to be putting this part right here up against the knot. And so I really don't need this part to be there like that sticking up. So I'm going to start my pattern, laying it out right here. I can, if you can see that, I'm going to push this up where it's like so and go where this part right here meets that, and then I can take a piece of tape here and do this, okay? Do with me. Now I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna trace this out right here. And I'm also gonna catch this part here because there is a truss rod adjustment port that I'm gonna need to, uh, cut out. Okay, while I'm doing this, I do not want this to move. So I have two pieces of tape here, one up here, one here, and I'm just going to carefully go around. You want to remember these raised ladders on these old plates can present a little problem if you don't go slow. Okay. Anyway, we're just going to go around the whole plate like that until we get it marked out. Okay, I'm going to be really careful up here because I've taken one end of the tape off. And again, slower is better on this one. You're only going to get 
a chance to cut this once, okay? And I may have done something different um, if I didn't want that cactus there or something. But, so don't worry, I'm gonna use this on another part of the guitar. But now we just pull this off and there we go. I may have to come along and draw in some stuff that got skipped over here. Now, most important part of this, I have a pair of these. I forget where I got them, but they're Malco model M12, Malco M12. They cut this thickness of material and anything I've run across, and they're also light. I think they're made out of aluminum. You can also cut corners and stuff pretty well with a Malco M12. Now, I'm going to take my Malco M12s, and I am going to cut this out. Now, as I'm going along here, I am going to make sure that I stay outside the line because if I go inside the line, I'm going to end up being too short and stuff will stick out that I don't want. I can always grind this off with a belt sander and come into the line and, and to the neck of the guitar or the headstock, but I don't want to be cutting right on the line. Again, this stuff is kind of hard to cut. These do well, as you can see. Um, I do want to try and save this and this if possible. Anyway, I'm going to get this cut out and I'll take it to the belt sander. Okay, now notice here that I've actually cut way past where I want to stop so I could preserve that. And I'm also going to go way over to here and cut this like so right up to where I can cut across. That way I can preserve all of this for another project. Okay, now I can come across here and cut this. And these will turn a little bit, but I am just going to try to cut fairly straight across. And then once I get the big plate going, then I can come in and cut down into there and get the rest of this down to the mark with a belt sander. Okay, now we've got this roughed in with the belt sander and clipped off this end where it's going to sit against the nut. What we want to do is we want to kind of line everything up here and we want to clamp it down like so. And then what we're going to do is when we see everything's okay from the top like so, then we can flip it over and we can take a fine sharpie now and we can go along and see what's sticking out here and see what we need to do on the belt sander to get this really close. We want to remember now that the line we're drawing on the outside is right to the edge so when we're doing our sanding work we can come in a little bit off of that because we want to be inside the edge. You really don't want this metal right up against the edge when people touch it. You want it pulled in a little bit and then we're going to bevel it in fact a little bit when we do the final sanding on it. So there we go. Alright. I can see black everywhere around. That's good. So we'll be clearing the edges here. Now, the last thing I need to know is when we were grinding this, it got to a point where some things got a little off kilter. I still have my saguaro cactus pointed this way up. So when the audience sees this, I'll be able to see that. But what I've done is I've marked off the center of the truss rod pocket right there. And I've taken this little slider gadget and I can put it against the nut and determine that my pocket on this plate needs to be, once this is lined up, again it's always best to clamp it. I like these clamps, they have a little finger thing on them. You clamp this down, and of course you go along and look and make sure that everything is the way you wanted it. And then I can see that the center of that is right there and it needs to come to out here. So I'll just cut this like so. Now, fortunately, I have the little brother of those big Malcos right here. And I can just turn that in and come around like so. 
And again, I'll just take a hand file and go to the belt sander and get this all straightened out. And you can see that our truss rod pocket is open. Everything will fit. You can trim that down just a little bit more. But there's going to be something covering this. So I don't have to worry too much about how it looks. It's just important that I be, I'm able to get a screw there and there. Okay, there we go. Everything is lined up. I can see a little bit of black around everywhere. I'm going to take the clamp. I'm going to clamp it down again. Make sure everything is lined up here because this is the last chance. This is the last fair deal going down right here, people. All right, so now I'm going to take my awl and I'm going to pop a mark. You want to be careful doing this. I'm going to pop a mark right here. And I'm going to put one right there. And I'm going to come up on this corner like so. There we go. Right there. And another one right there. Now, I'm going to take a small drill bit, drill those four holes, and then we're going to use some Chick Flick TL screws and pin those down. We're also going to do a couple here and here. That way we can flip it over and figure out where our, our tuner is going to pop out and how do we drill this out cleanly. Okay, now for the screw holes, I've got the, the holes going through the plate, but for the screw holes, I want to come in with something a little bit uh, smaller, and I don't want to drill all the way through the headstock and have weird holes coming out the back, so pay attention to that. All right, now that those are on, we're going to pin this down a little bit. What we want to do is feel under here and see where the holes are. There's one right here. We don't want anything interfering with that hole. There's another one here and another one here. So we can just pop a screw right here again, tapping with our all like that, and then one equidistant from the edge between the holes. And then if we carry those across to here... We're going to get the same thing right there. We'll drill those out the way we did these and get this pinned down. Okay, now it's going to be a little bit tricky. I can go along here and make sure that my edges are okay. If they're not, I can take a file and knock that down. I may put another screw or two in here. Once again, when we put the tuners on, the tuner has a nut that's going to suck this down and we will we'll depend on that as well. But we're going to turn this over now and you can bash the guitar on the light up there, but you can see that there's metal shining through those holes there. So what we want to do is get all the scrap apparatus out of the way and we want to support the headstock like so and we're going to take our all and we're going to make sure we're right in the center of the holes not off to the side and then we're going to drill a hole and then we're going to take one of these step bits and we're going to make sure that everything is the same size now we may have to take that off to do that or whatever but we want to make sure that these holes are centered up so again you just take your all you look down the hole you find the center you tap it like so and then we're going to drill a very small pilot hole through the back end of the license plate through the 
two in a row. You want to make sure if there's a ladder that's raised up or something here, just take your time. You only do that once, like so. All right, there we go. We have our pilot holes coming up. Now we can just take our step bit. These things, these graduated bits, are awesome for metal work. You just want to make sure that you're centered up over the hole like that and just go along one by one and get them closer and closer. Notice I have my clutch set really low. I don't want anything hanging up here and messing everything up. All right, moment of truth, we want to take one of our tuners here and we want to push it up through. It sits flat back there, so we're good. Um, the nut fits down in here. Little problem here, not too big a one. These embossed letters here, let me get this marker open. These embossed letters here are going to cause a little conflict. So I'm just going to take the magic marker and make a little mark everywhere here where that happens. And then I can take a chisel or even a little mini grinder and knock those down where these sit flush with the plate. Easy money. All right, guys, there we go. Pretty spiffy, or maybe not. So you might be asking yourself, what do I do this for? Well, first thing, get yourself in the right headspace. We're not Jimmy DeQuisto. We're not John D'Angelico, unless your name is Ken Parker. Um, yeah, there's factories cranking out stuff that's just better on the average day going through an assembly line that most of us can do. So, our goal is to try to make something dependable, and then when it comes to artists, is it unique? And that's what I'm doing here with this kind of thing. So I like the way um, this is themed. It's Arizona themed. You're going to figure out why when it all comes down to it. But the main thing here that we're doing, in addition to make, making these guitars unique and individual is we're going to make them safe and playable and durable too. Always keep that in mind. So when you start digging in on stuff like this, don't be afraid to try something out on the bench and see if it's going to work out for you. But this guitar is going to come together. It's going to be pretty spiffy. And again, we're going to have an episode about another license plate and this guitar on making a pit guard as well as the surround for the pickup and the input jack. So that said, if you like this kind of stuff, give me a like. Uh, send me an email if you got an idea or a question. I'm always looking for ideas uh, on content that you want to know or when I'm not explaining things. Technically, let me know in an email. Give me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you soon.